Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday evening, August 18th. The thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're still tracking our two disturbances in the Atlantic 97L and 98L. And we're going to start again here with 97L, now moving through the Eastern Caribbean. This is the zoomed-in satellite shot. The sun is setting on these loops, which is why they turn uh, all black and white here at the end. Uh, we can still see a rather well-defined wave envelope kinked flow to the north of Curacao now with a northwest flow on the west side, southeast flow on the east side. And we've had near zero or light westerly flow north of Venezuela. And uh, this has uh, shown the potential for this wave axis to try to close off into a circulation. It hasn't quite done it, uh, but it is a well-defined wave axis. And again, this is thanks to uh, wind shear and trade winds being less hostile in this part of the Caribbean than we typically see them. And this is allowing this wave axis to remain rather well-defined. And so we have a nice area of vorticity or spin here moving through the Caribbean. Uh, the negative side to the system's state today is with regards to thunderstorm activity. Uh, because there is some dry air that is continuing to wrap in on the northwest side of this, and uh, we can see evidence of that with these outflow boundaries that you can see racing outward on uh, this side of the storm here over the northern Caribbean. Uh, these boundaries indicate air that's flowing outwards away from collapsing thunderstorms, and you can see those collapse right here within the ellipse I just drew during the day today. That's due to the dry air, and that's causing thunderstorm activity to be less than ideal here with only a few thunderstorms, not a lot of convective coverage. Uh, this is the what is currently hampering the system most, and as this continues to come westward, that will be an issue for at least the next day or two. By the time it gets west of Jamaica's longitude and gets into the Western Caribbean, we may see conditions get a little bit more favorable as it will be importing some more of the moisture that's going to be coming out of Venezuela at the time, and uh, it'll perhaps have mixed out some of this dry air mass. And at that point, we could see better chances for development, but at the moment, it's kind of status quo, a strong wave moving through the Caribbean. If we look at the GFS model forecast for the mid-level flow and moisture, we can see our wave axis right here on the model, and you can see that dry air in browns kind of encroaching on the north and west side of the wave axis. And as we go forward through Wednesday, and Thursday, you can see the wave passing south of Jamaica, and you can see the moisture field deepen and become more green as we get a little bit more moisture. And as this happens, we will also have a little bit more background vorticity to the north of Panama, between Panama and Jamaica in this part of the Caribbean. And at this point, we might see a slightly more organized system. Here on the GFS, there isn't really a storm at this point. By Friday, and Saturday we start to see a little bit more of a circulation develop as this approaches the Yucatan Peninsula. This happens rather late on the model. When this happens has been varying from run to run. For example, the prior run before this had a slightly earlier development and a little bit of a stronger low, and you can see the run before that was similar, with the most recent run being a little bit weaker. Uh, but you can see the potential here on the GFS for some sort of development. This has been fairly consistent over the last day or two. However, you can also see some of this green moisture starting to get strung out northward into the Gulf of Mexico because we have a very strong mid-level trough approaching from the northern Gulf Coast. And if we look at the upper level flow at 200 millibars in the upper part of the atmosphere, we can see that trough outlined very well. And it could serve two purposes here, one being that if we have this strong flow out of the southwest like this, as we saw in the prior image, it could start to drag moisture up away from the developing storm. And if the storm is weak at this moment, it could disrupt this forming circulation and not allow all of this moisture to congeal in one tight spot, instead stringing it out and keeping the storm weak. The other impact, of course, could be just wind shear that could tilt the vortex over or uh, again, separate it from its thunderstorm activity and moisture, both of which would be hostile impacts to any storm that's trying to develop here. And so anything that does try to come up into the Gulf of Mexico could potentially face obstacles and perhaps uh, remain weak. But this isn't necessarily guaranteed as there are different paths forward here. If the storm is slower, and tries to gradually move into the Gulf over the weekend and early next week, it's possible that this trough will have a chance to erode. We can see this kind of happen on the GFS, where if you go out to Sunday, you can see the trough now lifting out. Most of it's up here. The part that's left behind is much weaker, so any storm potentially sitting here on its southeastern flank 
perhaps we'll eventually see less shear impacting it over time. And on the GFS, we do get the remnants of the storm on this particular run in a less hostile environment by early next week in the western Gulf of Mexico. As far as the track of this goes, before it, we have a formed storm, if we get a formed storm, there's always uncertainty. But a general rule here will be a weak storm will tend to just track west-northwest across the Yucatan Peninsula and perhaps end up in the southwest Gulf of Mexico uh, after the weekend. Uh, if it does strengthen more east of the Yucatan Peninsula, we could see a turn more toward the right and more toward the north, potentially impacting the United States long term. Uh, but first things first, we need to see if we actually get a storm here. We're going to be watching our eye on this part of the Caribbean where development is probably most likely before the shear picks up and while there's ample moisture. That's what the system currently lacks is moisture. It will have that for a couple of days before the shear picks up and potentially disrupts it again. So we'll see if it can take advantage of that window. Right now models are kind of iffy on that but the wave does look good and chances are probably still decent that it tries to become a tropical storm at some point. So keep an eye on this if you're in Central America where heavy rains will be a concern as we head into the weekend. Looking back at the full Atlantic view, we'll turn our attention to the east to Invest 98L, still well east of the Caribbean in the central Atlantic. And you can see this remains a very broad area of cloudiness and thunderstorms here. If we take a zoomed in look, uh, we'll see that this remains pretty messy, similar to yesterday. And as we talked about, we're waiting for this to consolidate into something more compact. This is still part of what's called the monsoon trough, where we have generally southwesterly winds to the south and easterly winds to the north. And so that's trying to cause this whole region to rotate, but it's over a very elongated region from west to east. This area of spin evident to your eye here is what we're calling 98L, but there's also an area of spin to the east, and there's even been a little bit of spin to the west of that today. You can even see some west-northwest surface flow at the beginning of the loop here along latitude 10 before the sun goes down, indicating that there's a very elongated region of rotation here. And this is quite hard for models to deal with uh, because this is what we call kind of nonlinear dynamics, uh, where this strip of vorticity could break down and roll up into different vortices such as this one, such as this one, that may then interact with each other, perhaps combining and consolidating into something else over the next day or two. And that can be quite difficult to predict. We saw this with Isaias, where models struggled, and this is happening again here. If we take a look at the European model, we can see this in action uh, because this is the 12Z run from this morning showing what it analyzed the low level wind field to look like with 98L spin region there, its companion area of spin to the east and the one to the west that we showed on satellite imagery. And if you compare that to yesterday's forecast for this morning at the same time, you can see that the very different looking. Yesterday's forecast had a much more compact and different looking situation than we have on the analysis in the same model just a day later. So you can see that the model didn't do very well even on a one-day forecast. This is telling you that that uncertainty is definitely there, and it's something to keep in mind. We kind of are waiting for this to consolidate before we have a good idea of what its future evolution will be. And it'll probably still take a day or two for that to happen. The trend on the models has been toward less robust development of this in the short term. If we look at the current Euro, which although I just mentioned it is struggling, it has trended toward a weaker storm. The prior run had a full tropical storm by Wednesday and Thursday, but the current run has no storm and just has an open wave here. And this actually continues even as it moves north of the Caribbean islands into the weekend, which is again very different from the prior run, which had a storm. So there's been some variability in the forecasts here. The GFS uh, shows uh, in some ways a similar evolution to the Euro. Again, here's 98L spin to the west and spin to the east of it. This elongated region eventually becomes a little bit better consolidated as we go forward. You can see by Thursday morning it has now collapsed into a more circular region of rotation, but it is not a closed circulation on the model and remains an open wave axis oriented southwest to northeast. 
And as it continues toward the Caribbean islands, again, still no storm here. It remains just a strong wave. Now, typically when these waves are moving toward the Caribbean like this, we have a, a big sal surge to the north, very strong wind south of this ridge to its north. That strong east wind does allow for a lot of spin to occur to the south of that wind belt. And typically waves uh, this time of year uh, try to develop uh, when that happens. And it would be rather surprising to see a wave that looks like this on the GFS fail to become any kind of tropical storm. Typically, you'll see them at least become a storm even if they struggle to get very strong. You kind of expect at least a tropical storm here. And uh, it is a little surprising to see the models completely dropping development of this on some of their runs today. It's worth pointing out that on the GFS, if you look at its initialization of the mid-level flow field this morning, it doesn't really have any rotation in this region here. It just has easterly flow by and large, and it doesn't really show the area of spin that we see on the satellite loop with our very eyes this evening. So it's possible that the model is still struggling to analyze the current state of the atmosphere accurately, and we may still see more changes in these model runs going forward. So don't assume that just any run of the GFS of the Euro will come to pass here. In general, what we know we have is a pretty distinct wave that is likely to be at least a significant weather event approaching the Northeast Caribbean on Friday, and heavy rains may overspread the Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and maybe eventually Hispaniola as we head through the weekend. And there are still probably decent chances that this is a tropical storm as it approaches. Now, it is going to face some obstacles, so if it does develop, um, its intensity will likely be limited somewhat, primarily by wind shear. If we look at the upper level wind forecast at this time on Friday morning, we can see where the, the storm would be on the GFS, and yellow here outlines an upper level trough that is in the way of the storm, generating southerly wind aloft. And we mentioned that there's very strong mid to low level wind to the north of the storm out of the east, and with southerly wind aloft that's out of a different direction at a different height, that's a wind shear that is hostile to tropical development. So if this does become a storm, it will face at least uh, that inhibition as it's approaching the Caribbean, and significant intensification isn't really expected prior to it reaching the islands, even on models that do develop the storm. However, this trough will not last forever and will eventually erode so that when this comes farther west, conditions may improve somewhat. Uh, at this point on the model, though, you can see that as it approaches the Caribbean islands, we end up with a surface wave axis that is offset to the west of the mid-level wave axis where all the moisture in green is here. This indicates that shearing of the wave and the struggles uh, that it will likely be encountering at this time. If we shift over to the west, we'll be able to see how the model handles uh, the evolution of this upper level trough. If I go back to where this is on 18Z Friday, Friday afternoon, again we have our upper level trough in yellow as this approaches uh, Puerto Rico. And over time, this yellow will erode, and you'll see that this trough kind of opens up into a broader easterly flow south of this upper level ridge north of the Bahamas. Whatever tropical wave or storm that we might have here on the GFS would be encountering a less hostile environment by that time. So it's possible that in the longer term, as we get past the weekend and into early next week, even if 98L fails to develop near the Leeward Islands, it may still have chances down the road, be it in the Bahamas or near the southeast United States or in the Gulf of Mexico or even near Cuba or Hispaniola. We may have to watch it for many days yet as the environment will get less hostile eventually and uh, we'll probably be tracking this for, for several days yet to come. So we'll continue to watch 98 and 97, that's here on this plot too, will be near the Gulf of Mexico during this time. So we have two storms to watch, both potentially threats to land, uh, but right now neither of them developing very quickly. So we'll continue to watch and see how this evolves. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.